Hello, this is another in the series of lectures by the Seas Health Corporation. We're focused on why is there so little relief from musculoskeletal problems in the population. This is part of a special series on the origins of most back pain. The video is designed for patients coming um, to see us or who we discussed our case over the internet. These lectures are educational and not intended by themselves to manage individual patients. They are not the substitute for seeing a healthcare professional. Among the reasons our patients vary and no brief presentation substitutes for formal training. Again, we'd like our patients to see these who see these videos before they come in with back pain. Overall, the Seas Cor Health Corporation focuses on increasing function with age, non-surgical injury restoration, injury prevention, and fitness. And generally, we deal with high-risk patients with fitness like diabetes and hypertension. My name is Mark Brzezinski. Uh, normally, I don't go on these slides into my background because this is an isolated slide. I'll just go briefly. So I'm a functional movement and fitness specialist since the 90s. I've been at Harvard Medical School and either Bergman Women's and Mass General since this year. Um, I did my residency at Harvard Medical School, Bergman Women's Fellowship and Harvard Medical School, Mass General. Um, I formally moved to the orthopedics department in 2000 even though um, I was trained in internal medicine and cardiology to do functional movement. Uh, I have a PhD in exercise physiology. I'm a certified personal trainer. Even though we do functional movement and fitness and we focus in on uh, movement and not the surgical exams you generally see with orthopedics and physical therapy and athletic training, we do incorporate those exams also. I was the um, first person to win the presidential award for musculoskeletal disease. I won it from President Clinton um, and I'm the author of over 150 papers. So I'm going to start with an analogy before we actually talk about back pain. Um, I'm originally from Pennsylvania and this is a lake where I've lived at and the house is on this lake. It's a, at 2,600 feet, a glacier lake. Um, the houses have trouble with their foundations. But if you continue to just keep repatching the foundations, you're not addressing the problem. The problem is because of the altitude and the slope of the mountains, water coming down, down off the mountains and high winds, particularly dropping of the jet stream, causes uh, pressure on the foundations. So the goal is to redirect the wind and redirect the water flow, not to just keep patching foundations. But that's analogous to the way back pain is treated in the majority of cases. So we're going to discuss the concept of the kinetic chain, which has become important in this field. Unfortunately, a lot of people use the phrase kinetic chain, but they don't actually incorporate it into their diagnosis and treatment. And the kinetic chain for this discussion means that all joints, bones, muscles, and ligaments in a weight or force bearing system can't be viewed in isolation. For example, when looking at the spine, all these components from the foot to the spine itself are all dependent on each other. And generally, they're the cause of the back pain. Um, so, in our practice, the two most co there's two common problems in the ch kinetic chain we see, and these are um, either sitter's disease, which I'm going to go into, or problems in gait, such as internal or external rotation of the foot or uh, inversion, eversion, supination, pronation. You may not be familiar with those terms, but uh, just understand that things that go on at your foot can actually affect your back. So 
generally these things do one of two things. They either tilt the back um, laterally or to the side um, or forward or backwards and it's particularly problematic during gait. This is genetic, generated um, in a kinesiology program. So just inverting your foot, you can see it inverts your knee, drops your hip, and it puts in um, a C shape into your spine. Now, so obviously the red arrow is the ankle. The blue arrow is the spine. So on the side opposite the arrow, muscles are contracting to try to pull the spine straight. And on the side of the blue arrow, ligaments and other structures are being stretched. All these can be and generally are the sources of pain in back pain. Now one of the most common things you see, and it's somewhat frustrating, is I have a disc. Well, people generally stop generating discs or having disc bulging between the ages of 35 and 40, but the discs become symptomatic later. Well, why are you getting pain from your disc if it's not being symptomatic? Sometimes it's because it has nothing to do with your disc, or in other cases it's because your disc is being brought in proximation with other structures, particularly nerves, and giving symptoms like sciatica. So the top two slides show two forms of what we refer to as sitter disease disease from sitting too long, and that's a major problem in the U.S. On the left, the hip flexors, ilius psoas, and the quads get tight, so it tilts the pelvis anteriorly. And you can see this creates a forward C shape, or a backward C, in the forward direction in the spine. So if we look what ha this does to the vertebrae below in image C, you see stretching green arrow of the um, uh, uh, the ligaments, and you also see on the opposite side the space, which is called the intervertebral foramen here, uh, where the spinal nerves come out as getting smaller. So if you have a uh, disc in this region, it can uh, protrude if it's protruding out into the space as you close that lumen from tilting your hip anteriorly or forward then you're going to bring the disc approximation of the nerve now we look at the opposite direction when your hamstrings for instance are tight so your hip is tilted posteriorly and uh, this results in the space where the spinal nerves is open but now we're stretching the ligaments on the back of the spinous processes. And in addition, you can see the blue arrow, which is the intervertebral disc in between the two, uh, the blue section with the arrow. Uh, you can see in between the intervertebral vertebrae, the blue disc, which protrudes into the spinal cord. So in patients with spinal stenosis, this is going to make them worse. And um, in the other image, which had been presented, the, the image to the right had been presented in the previous slide, you see lateral motion. So anterior tilting, posterior tilting, or lateral tilting, and generally almost always caused by events occurring at the hip or below, uh, lead to problems in the back. And we're going to keep going over this point. To, correct your back pain in the long term, you're generally dealing with fixing problems at the waist or below. Direct treatment on the back itself may be very helpful for the acute phase, but not necessarily the chronic phase. And what makes it worse is if you're in any of these positions, anterior tilt, posterior tilt, or lateral tilt, during gait, you're applying anywhere from two to five times your body weight each time your foot hits the ground into that spine. And you can start to see that if you repetitively do that on average four to 5,000 times a day, that you're just gonna be stretching ligaments or um, causing muscles to be in chronic spasm. And you're going to get back pain. So the focus is on the kinetic chain. Release those hamstrings 
release those iliosos muscles or quads when indicated or correct foot position is indicated and again you have to determine that by the individual patient and correct gait and um, you generally see an improvement in the patient now we have imaging uh, or excuse me we have videos on all these topics but why do we not push for uh, imaging in most patients and some patients absolutely do image need imaging but it often frustrates patients that we don't really uh, not, I don't want to say don't care about what it says on their imaging but um, their imaging doesn't give you necessary imaging doesn't give you the diagnosis you really have to do an excellent history and physical and history and physical is almost never a substitute for um, I mean, excuse me, an imaging study is almost never a substitute for a very good history and physical. So this was recommendations from the American College of Physicians. And I recommend people read this paper. And this is just the abstract. But if you look at the last um, lines, um, it says that uh, low back pain is very common in many patients with low back pain receive routine spinal imaging. Um, despite evidence-based recommendations from the American College of Physicians and American Pain Society that call for imaging only for patients who have se severe or progressive neurologic defects or signs and symptoms suggestive of serious or specific conditions. This is problematic because routine imaging does not seem to improve clinical outcome and exposes patients to unnecessary harms. And this unnecessary harms can be, be well beyond x-rays, but unnecessary procedures. And when they talk about um, specific conditions, some of the things you worry about are cancer, um, infection, fracture. Uh, there's something called Cotta-Quina syndrome. And, but, a lot of this should be picked up from the history and physical. So this is a patient who's protruding onto the, as a disc protruding on to the, uh, uh, the uh, spine, but the, the spinal cord, excuse me. But the, the point with this slide is that if the patient is symptomatic, you're going to pick it up on physical exam. And if the patient is asymptomatic, the fact that you see a radiographic diagnosis, um, you're unlikely to do anything. And so you do run into this problem pretty frequently where you have a patient who has the radiographic diagnosis, of, let's say spinal stenosis or severe pack pain or discs, which pretty much most of the patients we see are going to have but if on physical exam you can see that that these um, aren't symptomatic you're not really going to do that much different about it you're more focused on the functioning from below so again there are actual reasons to vision the back and among those are tumors fractions or infections or nervous comp nervous system compromise uh, and you can see that, to a large degree, local treatments may be effective acutely, but chronically, they generally are not effective. They're not a long-term solution in the patient populations we see. So again, joint muscles, ligaments, and tendons can't be evaluated in isolation of re the rest of the kinetic chain. And again, we present these lectures predominantly for people who are going to see us in the clinic or uh, online before they get there. So they have an understanding of why we approach uh, your problem in the way we approach your problem. But the video itself does not substitute for, um, for being evaluated by a healthcare professional. There's too many other issues that need to be taken into account.